The Cubs aimed for the sweep in Miami at Lone Depot Park, but came up short, dropping one to the Marlins 7-2 on Sunday. Now they head to Pittsburgh to take on the Pirates and three of their best starters. What's in store for this Cubs team? We're going to talk about that and more on this edition of the Cubs Baseball Channel. Make sure to like and subscribe. Get in that comment section. Let us know what you think the Cubs will do in Pittsburgh against the Pirates. But for now, here is your invitation to our show. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Cubs Baseball Channel. My name is Anthony Pasquale. He is Mick Gillespie, and you can find him on Twitter at Broadcaster Mick. You can find me at Ant underscore Pasquale 3 to make sure to follow us on there as we tweet out some good Cubs stuff as well as any updates regarding the channel. But Mick, yesterday, the Cubs were aiming for the sweep against the Miami Marlins. Instead, they come up short with a 7-2 to loss. Um, the game was a lot closer than that. The Cubs kind of imploded in the bottom of the eighth. Marlon scored four on them. Um, but the story of the game, which has been just about every loss of the last month, no offense. Yeah, they, they had another one of those games where they just couldn't make adjustments. And and it's it, it's one of the reasons why this team is not going to make the playoffs. In these kind of games, you're playing a bad team. You got to get the sweep. And you just need to put some runs on the board and – you know, they just they're not able to in these type of games. And we see it, you know, I've let every five ga games uh, or so where they just look like they're just anemic, you know, and they, they don't they, they don't have a way to make those in bad adjustments in these games or they haven't been able to. And it's another one of those opportunities to sweep. You have to have those to make the playoffs and then they just come up short. Yeah, absolutely. Um, offensively, it was pretty quiet. Only six hits all day, and Ian Happ had three of them. Um, Horner had a hit. Dansby Swanson had a hit. And Christian Bethencourt had an RBI single. Uh, that was pretty much it. Ten strikeouts against a guy who had a pretty high ERA heading into the game. Um, Cubs stranded some runners in the bottom of the seventh or the top of the seventh inning. That I think was probably their best chance. Um, and then ends up scoring no runs. They did add one in the top of the ninth, but that was about it. Offensively, just couldn't get much going. Um, Wisdom got the start, and Paredes came in for him because he was ejected in a, kind of an odd-looking play. He struck out, um, didn't seem to agree with the call, but I think he was more frustrated that he struck out than he was at the umpire, but he threw his hands up in frustration and then whipped his helmet to the ground, like most hitters do when they make the last out of the inning because they have to go out into the field. Somebody will bring their glove and their hat. They don't need their helmet. Uh, Wisdom didn't say a word, but the umpire ejected him. What, what were your thoughts on that? Well, I mean, I think of the umpires, it's like, you know, your job is just to kind of go out there and call balls and strikes and kind of let things flow. Uh, I, I didn't think that was a good ejection, but I'm sure there's a lot of pressure on him. I mean, he's probably the next guy that's going to get released, you know, and then the they're starting to look around right now and make moves on, you know, guys. I mean, we saw Hector Neris, who's back with the Astros again. That was kind of a surprise, right? David Bodie. Wisdom's got to be the next guy. I mean, the Cubs, they're, they're not going to make the playoffs. They've got all these young guys in, in the minor leagues. And... um you know, he, he's not a player that we see a lot. Typical game for him, you know, a couple strikeouts, two at bats. You know, he's not very good in the field. And uh, as much of a good person as he is, I mean, you know, the, the end is near. And I, I'm sure he feels that. Yeah. I mean, I, I saw a lot of people on Twitter and in our comment section saying that uh, once Wisdom got ejected, it probably made the Cubs chances to win go up a little bit because Paredes <laughs> came into the game, but uh, we're, we're not here to dog the guy, but like you said, he's probably um, the next guy kind of on that chopping block. If the Cubs were to decide to pull the trigger and bring up another of their prospects, whether it be Shaw or Casey or whoever it might be, uh, wisdom is probably the, the last man on that 26 man roster. Um, and he could not do much with his start yesterday because it was cut short by the umpires. But speaking of starts, Javier Assad got to go for the Cubs. He took the loss, uh, but he pitched seven innings. That's about as deep as I've seen Assad go 
and it only took 87 pitches. He was as efficient as he's been, and a big reason why is he only gave up one walk, uh, only issued one free pass. Um, he allowed six hits, two home runs in the first inning, uh, and that was just about it. Seven innings, three runs. I think if you told me before the game that Assad was going to give me seven innings and three runs, I would like the Cubs' chances to win the game. Yeah, I mean, I, I I have no problem with that. I mean, that's a quality start, you know, and he and he gave them a chance to win. The problem is the offense. The problem is that this team hasn't been able to, one out of five games, generate anything, you know, and this was another one of those games, you know, where you need to probably bunt to get on base, steal some bags, you know, go the other way, uh, walk, you know, get a big hit, you know, and you can't rely on home runs every night. And then the games where the Cubs don't rely on the long ball, I mean, they just seem to be a team that's really beatable, even for what looks like a, you know, basically a glorified triple A team like the Marlins. You got to win all these games if you want to get back in the race. And that's just not what happened. And, you know, and, and the same thing, I, you feel bad for Assad. I mean, you know, you go out there and give them seven innings and give up three runs, you know, you're supposed to get some support when you're playing a team like the Marlins, but, you know, we talk about it all the time. I mean, you know, every team in Major League Baseball has a chance to win. Great teams, they're not going to struggle with Marlins, but the Cubs aren't in that great team category. Yeah, absolutely. But I mean, you look at the Yankees and the Yankees lost to the Rockies yesterday. Like, obviously, you can't go out and win every game. But the difference between those two teams is the Cubs have zero margin for error right yeah. now. They have to. They have to go out there and sweep teams uh, just to get themselves back in the playoff picture. And we talked about how important it was for the Cubs to get back to 500. And a day after they finally get there, they give one back. So uh, now they're going to be chasing as they head in uh, to Pittsburgh to play the Pirates. But uh, we talked about the Cubs having a, a pretty light schedule for a while, 18 straight games against teams below 500. Well, they're nine games through that, and they're six and three. So yeah. better than average, and, and that's where you're supposed to be. You're supposed to be winning series, but the Cubs really need to come away with a sweep, uh, whether it be against the Pirates or the Nationals or the Pirates next week at Wrigley. But um, at the very least, they've won three series in a row, which you can't be too mad about because winning series is winning baseball. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I guess you can't. But if you're, you know, if you're trying to be 500, then the Cubs are doing a good job of that. But if you're trying to make the playoffs, you're not. And and I said this last year, and this is one of the biggest problems that I have with where the Cubs are right now is what's your goal? I mean, is your goal to be a 500 team or is your goal to make the playoffs in it or is your goal to win the World Series? And that's the thing that we keep talking about. You know, where is this organization going? And and I think those are the questions that, you know, ownership is going to want answered. Fans definitely wanted one answer, you know, because I we're all kind of sitting around wondering, like, you know, when is this team going to contend? I mean, seriously contend. And this is another season where you're in a big market. And you, you've got to contend. And, and that's the bottom line. I mean, that's not an indictment of any individual or the team. It's an indictment of every individual and the team, you know, because when you're in Chicago and you're putting out that kind of money, you've got to succeed. And it just feels like sometimes with the, you know, the entire thing right now uh, on and so many levels that it's like, you know, it's acceptable not to be the best. And that to me is exactly unacceptable. You know, when you show up, it's like, wh what's your job to do? Is your is your job to be political or is your job to win games? You know, is your job to put on the best TV broadcast or is your job to go out there and be political? It's, it's, it's just like so many different things. You, you look through it. It's like you you want people from the top to the bottom that won't accept this. And, and I know it's like, well, we won two out of three, you know, but yeah, but you're also, you know, five and a half, six games back. You're not really even going to make the playoffs i mean you got like a 97 percent chance not to make the playoff you're paying all this money for these guys and it's games like this where you want to see somebody out there breaking their leg to try to win a game and, and it just isn't there yeah it jockeying for 500 isn't good enough for august 25th of like year four of this rebuild like you can't be here right now and you can't be okay with being here right now i saw a tweet yesterday i can't remember who tweeted it but uh, it said, let's say the Cubs do go on a run, um, but it's it's not good enough to make the playoffs. But like, let's say they finish 86 and 70, what would that be? 76, 10 games over 500, they finish 162 games. Are you 
okay with that. You missed the playoffs, but you're 10 games over, which means you played pretty well down the stretch. No, I'm not okay with that. We, You want to make the playoffs. That's what we're here for. We're not here for five, six, seven, eight games over. We're not here to jockey around 500. We're the Cubs. You should be expecting and trying to make the playoffs every season. Yeah, I mean, and I, I think that's what it comes down to. Uh, I feel like it, it, it comes down to when you set the bar and you don't get there, you know, what's acceptable and what's not acceptable. How, I mean, what, what are the excuses going to be, you know, and, and the, and, and it's, I'm, like I said, it's in so many areas, you know, it, with 2016, you looked around and it was like the Cubs were amongst the best on the field, off the field. And, and then, you know, all of a sudden you look around and it's like, well, you got excuses for why. Well, it's because of this, or it's because of that, or this guy did this, or this guy did that, or we didn't right. do this, and we didn't do that, you know, butts and all that stuff. Um, the Cubs the Cubs have got to look themselves in the mirror from top to bottom, and they got to say, you know, where do we really stack up with the rest of the league on and off the field, and where do we want to be? And yeah. then make some tough decisions because they're wasting their money right now. I, I I would rather see them look like the White Sox and go out there and lose every day, get rid of all these players and start over again like they did when they started building towards the team that won in 2016 than to look and see all these contracts with all these guys that are signed for and, and, and holding down positions that they're really not that good. They're okay. They're like fives, like the scouts tell me. Hey, we got a whole team of fives. And then you got all these guys in AAA that are there foaming at the mouth to get to the big leagues, but are they even ready to go? I mean, that, you know, but when's this infusion of talent coming and where are they going to play? Yeah. And that's the huge thing. Like you have all these missing pieces and all these question marks, um, but it has to start at the top, right? Like Tom needs to decide is 86 wins and missing the playoffs in year four of a rebuild good enough, or is that the last straw and you get somebody new as a general manager? Like that's the same thing. That's what I'm saying. These are the questions yeah. you need to be right. asking. And um, these when your TV questions. network isn't making money, I mean, who do you look at? You know, you go, yeah. well, hey, man, it, it, is this okay? Or do you go, you know, we're not going to accept this because we got to make money so that we can afford to go out and buy more players. Absolutely. You know I mean? It's like there's so many different areas right here. And there's always an excuse. Well, this didn't happen or this happened or this is going on and we can't control this. The bottom line in anything, anything you do in life, not just managing a baseball team or not just owning a team or not just being the GM of a team or the president of the team is this, is that how hard are you going to work to be the best at what you can do every single day? And how long are you going to go around and accept excuses when you don't get there? You know, and, yeah. and I saw it when, you know, when, Al when Alabama brought Nick Saban in and then they went on a run and we talk about that with college football. When Joe Batten showed up, different style, same result. You know, and, and when Theo Epstein got there and the, and the things that he wanted to do, and it doesn't feel like anything like that right now. It feels like, ah, you know what? Right. And and that's, for me, that's like, we got to stop saying, oh, the Cubs are going to have a lot of questions to answer and start saying the Cubs need to answer them. Like they have to start doing that. And that's what I think we will look forward to seeing not only the rest of this season as maybe some young guys come up and play but also over the off season as they look toward 2025. But the one thing we do know the answer to is who the Cubs play today. It's the Pirates. They get back into the division, uh, breaking a streak of like, I think 14 straight against the AL and they haven't played a division team since the beginning of the month. Finally back in the division, a familiar team. The Cubs take on the Pirates tonight at PNC Park. Jameson Tyone, the former Pirate on the bump for Chicago, eight and eight on the year with a 3.77 ERA against Mitch Keller, who is 11 and seven with a 3.76. Uh, we'll break down the Cubs Pirates series a little bit more tomorrow morning, but uh, Mick, the Cubs have had problems with the Pirates this year. They're going to have to get that figured out. Who haven't they had problems with in the division? I mean, who's the <laughs> team in the division that they beat up on the teams that spend a lot less money, like the Reds and the Pirates, uh, they, they, they take care of the Brewers. I mean, look at the payroll, look at the team, you know, oh, the, but the, but you know, the Cubs lose the player and then there's always, well, you know what? We lost this guy. The Brewers lost their best player and they just keep on trucking, you know? So, mm -hmm. uh, that, that game against the pirates and the series against the pirates, they need to come in there and, and basically stomp them, but it's going to be hard. I mean, they, they haven't stomped anybody in the division. Um, it, it, it's it honestly it's just so frustrating you lose these games that you could get the sweep 
And then it's like, oh, well, we won the series. Well, you're supposed to win the series. You're playing a team of guys. They traded all their good players at the deadline. Right. You know, like, yeah, uh, it, like instead of being everybody's best friend, go in there and kick over the, the spread for a second. You know, throw something. I mean, like, like, you know, hey, I get it. You're millionaires. You don't have to listen to anybody. But you play like you're millionaires. You know, you should play like you're hungry and you can't afford to eat. That's what this team needs to do. And that's what this organization needs to do. Absolutely. I, I think – that's a good place to end because I couldn't have said it uh, better myself. They, they need to start playing like some hungry dogs and we'll see if that's what uh, we see today in Pittsburgh and for the rest of the season as the Cubs try to make one last push to those playoffs. But for now, guys, thanks so much for joining us on the Cubs baseball channel. We appreciate chatting with you guys. Uh, we're obviously frustrated. The Cubs should be winning games against the Miami Marlins, not losing them. Uh, but it comes from a point of love from this team, which we share with all of you guys. So keep liking, keep subscribing, keep getting in that comment section. We'll talk to you guys tomorrow um, about the Cubs and the Pirates. Go Cubs.